Welcome, and ladies and gentlemen, to another edition of the Sports Wrap with Michael Kravitz. I am your host, Michael Kravitz, and on today's episode, we're going to start it off with the Pittsburgh Panthers men's basketball team. Yesterday, 11 a.m. start, an unusual start time. Uh, they played their second Big East game of the year, first road game against Rutgers in Piscataway, New Jersey. And to start off the game, Pitt found themselves in a huge slump. They were down 19-5. to And I was, while I was watching this, I saw the same exact kind of stuff plague them in the Cincinnati game uh, in the second half. And then I saw visions of what happened last year. And at that point, I thought, okay, this Pitt team... It could be the it could this game could be over already, and I know it was too too soon to probably say that, but the way they've been playing, I couldn't see them coming back being down 14, even though it was this early in the game. Now they started to prove me wrong a little bit. Uh, they they had some runs in the first half, but at halftime it was still a 14 point deficit, 39 to 25. Second half though, Rutgers, uh, I believe the first five or six possessions all turnovers, and I mean Rutgers is not a good team. They got blown out by 25 at Syracuse. Uh, I don't think Rutgers is a postseason team. Maybe they're lucky to make the NIT. Pitt had their runs, uh, but the bottom line was they never inched closer than a three-point deficit. They never were able to take the lead in this game except for 2 nothing at the beginning of the game. And Rutgers ended up winning the game, 67-62. to So now Pitt is 0-2 to start off the Big East. Last year they started 0-7. The bottom line was they fell behind too early. That threw them off. Uh, Rutgers, I, I admit, Rutgers was making their shots. They were some lucky shots, but it let it was because of some poor perimeter defense by Pitt. Dixon, he shook things up in the game yesterday. He started Cameron Wright in place for James Robinson because Cameron Wright is a better on-ball defender. Rutgers, though, their key player, Eli Carter, who was normally a starter, he came off the bench, and he came in once they took Wright out. So he was guarded by James Robinson, and right now, Robinson is not proving to be a, uh, a top defender whatsoever. Uh, usually with, with pit guards in the past, they, they have become good defenders. But Robinson right now, I know he's still a freshman. Uh, but I just think he's not ready yet to guard the big boys. And I guess that goes and so with saying that the types of teams that uh, Dixon scheduled for Pitt, you got to put that into question. I don't like doing that because I think a team is as good regardless of who they play, but for freshmen, I think it would have been more paramount to at least schedule, you know, some notable teams, say like a, maybe a, a Florida State or a Mississippi State or a, a Nebraska, at least notable teams from notable conferences. And it goes, I, don't think, I think it goes without saying that this game Tuesday night at Georgetown, Georgetown came off a loss to Marquette uh, in Milwaukee. It's a must win. I think Pitt cannot go 0-3 because then it's going to get into the players' mindsets that, oh, when are we going to get our first win again? And is it going to be like last year when they start off 0-7 and pretty much they're out of it? Going into the game, I didn't like Dixon's comments because he was saying that over the past 10 years, Pitt has had the best road record, the most road wins of any team, and he said something has to add up there. That's something you don't say about a team. Because you should say, oh, we're ready to play, we're going to put that Cincinnati loss behind us, and we're going to execute our game plan. That's something they didn't do. I have, a, I have a slight feeling that sometimes, you know, these pit players, they show up thinking, okay, we're pit. We've been the top dogs in the Big East for how many years? Last year was just a fluke year. Well, it's proven not to be right now, because the pit they're losing to teams that will be bottom feeders. Rutgers is not a good team. Yes, they have their they have their quality win, a few quality wins flashes during during the year like they did last year. But they're not a good team, and for Pitt to lose to them, to not have the lead at all, except for the first few minutes of the game, that's not good enough. And these are two these these should have been two winnable games for Pitt because, like I said, ten and eight. Maybe nine and nine will be good enough to get you in the NCAA tournament. Zero oh, and two already. They can't keep digging themselves and putting themselves in this ditch because that's what it's turning out to be. Just like last year, 
And Georgetown, not a very good offensive team. So if Pitt can just find a way to shoot the ball better, they have a chance. Because Pitt shot less than 35% as a team for this game. Free throws were better. Three points, way too many. They attempted 26 three-pointers at the team, and they made eight. So yeah, it's 30%. That's okay making eight three-pointers a game. That's good. But attempting 26, Pitt is not a three-point shooting team. Uh, and it baffled me because they were, it looked like they were just settling for those shots. First play of the game, they worked it inside to Adams. Easy layup. They seemed to not go, go f through that pl for the plan anymore. They were trying to get the ball inside. Adams wasn't getting enough touches, I don't believe. And Zana was irrelevant. He was invisible in the first half. He only had nine points and all came in the second half. And Dante Taylor had a few good moments, but he, he was virtually uh, invisible too. So it's something that the pit, they need to execute the game plan that they set up for because they go in there, start shooting threes like crazy all the time, they're not going to win games. And Pitt had their chances. They had chances to get back in. They had the ball when it was down to a, a one-possession game. They just couldn't find a way to hit the shot. And once again, rebounding. They were getting, they were letting up rebounds in crucial situations. They weren't getting the offensive rebound, weren't getting the defensive rebound. They were out-rebounded by 10 to Rutgers. And Rutgers, they do not have a lot of tall players. So it was really surprising. And Rutgers had 17 turnovers, and they still won. Pitt only had 9. Usually it'd be the other way around. It's just it's disappointing to see because I thought this team was better than they're playing. I guess Steven Adams and James Robinson, the two high-regarded freshmen, they're not as as ready as I thought they would be. And... This game against Georgetown is huge. Uh, I don't care, even if they lose close, I, that's still not a good thing because this Big East is tough because Cincinnati, they lost at home to St. John's yesterday. Marquette's leading the division at 2-0, and some people expected them to be in the middle of the pack. It's proven. It's proving now that it's every single game in the Big East is going to be tough for this Pitt team because... I don't see them blowing out anyone. So they're going to have to find out a way to grind out these wins. And they're going to have to find they're going to have to have some star performers. Uh players going for 20 points or so because I know you can win a you can win a game when you get balanced scoring from everyone, but I mean JJ Moore led the team with 14 points off the bench. Of the starters, Trey Woodall led with 11. Uh Lamar Patterson didn't even score in the first half either. He has to be huge. They just have to find a way whether it's Patterson, Moore, Zana, Woodall. They have play they have the capable players to go out there and put up twenty a night. It's just they gotta be consistent with rebounding and not taking too many three point shots. So this game against Georgetown, I'm gonna pick Pitt just for the heck of it because I think they're the desperate team. They need this win. They can't start off Big East play 0 and three for the second year in a row. I think that would just be detrimental to uh, the team's attitude. And to top off the basketball loss, Pitt played in the BBVA Compass Bowl at 1 p.m. against Mississippi and Birmingham, Alabama. And right off the bat, the offense choked. Sanceri threw an interception the first time since September. They were down 14 nothing. They did get a touchdown again with Sanceri connecting the street to make it 14-7. to But on the next drive, a 49-yard kickoff return for the Mississippi, an easy touchdown. Pitt never really had a, soul, uh, had a pulse in this game after that point. Poor play by the offense. The defense couldn't stop the Rebels' offense. Uh, it was just a bad game for Pitt. Uh, Ray Graham didn't end up playing because of a, a hamstring injury early on, so Russell, Sh Russell Shell got the start. 25 carries for 79 yards. Nothing too great. It was just a really disappointing way for the seniors to go out. Especially they, all the players leading up said this is going to be different. We finally have a coach here who's going to be here for a while. And it was the same result pretty much as last year. When they got trounced by SMU by 22. So since Aries' career, I mean, it was only fitting that it ended this way because he never could get big wins for them. Uh... 
He was not a stellar quarterback, and he ended up seven yard or nine yards shy of or my mistake, seven yards shy of uh, passing Dan Marino for second all time on passing yards as a pick quarterback. Uh, it was pretty much a pathetic performance to say the least. Uh, I know Chris isn't happy. Uh, hopefully they will get they will have uh, better luck next year because I mean they're going to lose some key players, but they're going to have some key players coming back. Uh, and the only good news that came out of yesterday was that uh, Tyler Boyd uh, from uh, high school here in Pennsylvania, he, from Clareton High School, uh, committed to Pitt. Uh, but he's still going to make uh, recruitment visits to other play, other schools, such as Michigan State. So it's kind of weird, but he's a touted receiver. Uh, hopefully that'll help uh, because Pitt they need some good playmakers with the with Mike Shanahan leaving. So. I don't know yet because they'll be moving to the ACC. It's definitely going to be a tougher conference than the Big East. Uh, I just hope that Pitt can have a winning record uh, next year. And I also like to talk a little bit about the Pirates. Uh, just a few comments on them. Uh, we're getting close now, less than 40 days to uh, the catchers and pitchers report to, to Bradington, Florida for the Pirates in spring training. And the way it's looking right now, I don't hear any other moves being made. Uh, I mean, they released Rick Vandenherk as a minor move. He didn't help the team anyway. I'm getting the feeling, though, now that Garrett Jones is going to stay. I had, I thought maybe that they would try to move him, uh, but it looks like he's going to stay, and I think he'll be the starting first baseman and then still platooning in right field. So they're still going to have Alvarez, McCutcheon, and Jones, three potential 30 home run hitters. So I think that's definitely going to help this team. Now, to whether they're gonna, as if they're assigned more free agents, that's still left that left to be seen. I would hope that maybe they could get a couple more players, maybe some veterans, because I still think they need a veteran bench player, veteran bat, who, who you know can uh, get the hit when needed. Uh, I'm not sure who's out there for them to try and pursue, but I would just like to see them maybe try and get a couple more people in here, at least to compete for a spot on the opening day roster. And lo and behold, we finally have some updated progress with the NHL. 5 a.m., Yes, or 5 a.m. today, a tentative deal was in place between the NHL and the NHL Players Association. So that means hockey will return, finally. And all the details, of course, haven't been set yet, and the players still have to vote, but it's definitely going to get done. The question now becomes, will it be a 48-game season or a 50-game season? Because if it's a 50-game season, first games are going to start January 15th which is almost one week away. 48-game season will start the 19th. So now it'll just be, what, are there, are there going to be any preseason games? I don't think there would be. Uh, how long is training camp going to be? And uh, what, how, what teams are going to get their players back? Because the teams that are staying over in Europe, they might stay there in Europe uh, if their contract allows them to. Uh, so I'm just glad that this is finally done. I'm so excited, uh, especially here in Pittsburgh with the Steelers not playing and Pitt football done and the Pitt basketball team struggling right now. Penguins are going to be back. It's just a matter of seeing now what's going to happen. I mean, I think there's going to be a lot of different new teams in the playoffs because it's a shortened season. Uh, some of those perennial powers, like the Capitals, even the Penguins, Flyers, they, who knows? They might not even make the playoffs. And how the schedules are going to turn out either, whether they're just going to play the second half of their original schedule or if they're going to al uh, alter it somehow to give them a new schedule so that they play a certain amount of teams a certain number of times. So uh, I, I'm just really excited. It's going to be a lot of fun. Uh, and uh, that'll do it, though, for today. Uh, it's another shortened show. Um, but tomorrow I will be doing my Steelers season review show. I know I said I was going to do that first, but that'll be put up tomorrow. Uh, go over the high points, the low points of the season, look on to next year about the impending free agents, maybe some new players the Steelers might try to get. Uh, I'll be about the Steelers, and uh, looking forward to doing that. And uh, for the next Sports Wrap show, uh, sure to be getting into Pitt's games against Georgetown and Marquette. Uh, talk a little bit more about the NHL. Well, I'm sure they'll have all the, the plans finalized for when the season will start, the schedules, and any, if any there's any pirate news. And uh, I'll be sure to talk about the NFL playoffs a little bit too. But uh, that'll do it, though. Uh, thank you for listening. Uh, I'm Michael Kravitz, and you just listened to the Sports Wrap.